Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Knicks game. This is then what he said. He didn't find the New York Knicks enticing enough for him. Let's talk about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back to the Knicks game. Drafted by the Detroit Pistons in 2014, he was traded to the Brooklyn Nets where he spent the last five years, and now he's traded to the Washington Wizards which he thinks is a better team than the New York Knicks. What do y'all think, my fellow Knickerbockers? I don't think so. And to back up my back up my theory that the New York Knicks will have a higher seed and record and this will be a better team to watch than the Washington Wizards, I'm just going to do a little small comparison, all right? Since he said it's more enticing than the New York Knicks. Let's, let's just dive into the Washington Wizards roster. We're going to start out with their point guard, and we're going to compare them to the New York Knicks point guard. I'm not even going to... I might... Let me see. I'm not going to run off the, um, the New York Knicks players' um, point average this season. I'm just going to run with the Wizards, and we're going to see if the Washington Wizards is a more enticing team than New York Knicks right now. I don't know. I was asking first before I go. I was thinking... Because did we pursue well first? All right, let me, let me just say this, say this real quick. He denied that he said that the team Washington is more, you know, enticing. And early on in free agency, there was reports that the Knicks didn't even make a move to even try to acquire him. And then now there's reports coming out, I think it was Bergman, the New York Post, that the Knicks did try to get him. Either way, it was said that he thought the Washington Wizards was a better fit for him. And maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. We'll check it out. We're going to go to point guard. And we're not going to count Mr. Ben Whitty because he's the person we're talking about. So on the point guard, he has to help him because he is a point guard. You're going to have Raul Neto, Aaron Holiday against my man Kimber Walker, Derek Rose, and Miles McBride. I give the advantage to the New York Knicks when it comes to the point guard. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie is just coming off an injury. Last year, he only averaged six points. Before that, it was 20 points a game, and everybody was, you know, everybody got hyped. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thought he was going to, I don't know. We still got to see what he's going to do this season coming up. Washington is betting a lot of money. On a matter of fact, it's starting for a three-year, $52 million contract. I was, I'm, I was wondering, did the Knicks... Lowball him, offer him two million, twenty million. I mean, two years, twenty million dollar deal. I don't know why. Either way, we got. I think we got the better player in Kimber Walker. Like I said, at point guards from Washington to New York, the Knicks have the advantage. All right, let's go down to our shooting guard, Bradley Bill, Chris, Crisper, Corby, I mean, excuse me, Corby Crisper, and Caleb Hemsley, Holmesley. The advantage, let's go back to the last one, sorry, but I think over there, our shooting guards, RJ Barry, man, you put me in quick and grind. Here we have both um, our first round rookie draft picks. And um, the advantage, I, I, I'm gonna say the Wizards, but I also, you can also say 50 50 because um, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you, have anyone? Have any one of y'all heard of um, Caleb um, Holmesley? I haven't heard of Caleb Holmesley before, so I don't really know what he's capable of. Corey Pittsburgh, he's a rookie coming into the league, so everybody has projections of what he can do. We know what Bradley Bill, Bradley Bill can do, so I ain't gonna talk about him. But then again, we have RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and Quentin Grimes. And if y'all watched Quentin Grimes last week, some of these games, he was averaging something like 23 points a game. And, um, I mean, he's not probably going to be a starter in the league. I hope he'll be a starter, but he will be a good backup. I know I'll say he could be Clay Thompson, and I still think he could be. Right now, I'm just talking about his first and second year in the league. But I I don't know. Matter of fact, I'm going to say 50-50. I'm going to be honest with you. I know some of y'all, just comment in the comment section if y'all think that the Washington Wizards have an advantage on shooting guards over the Knicks by the players I just named, or do y'all feel the way I feel the 50-50? Because I think, you know, Bradley Bill is a better player than R.J. Barrett. But what if he get hurt? What happens when he goes to the bench? We know what man you quickly can do. We know what RJ Barry can do. And as a Knickerbocker fan, I know a bunch of y'all out there, 
we seen what RJ did in the Olympics, so we expected more from RJ this year. Because each year since he got in the league, only two years, I ain't gonna say like a lot. But he has improved. All right, so let's go to small forward. Small forward, over right here, small forward. Um, Washington have Catavius Caldwell Pope. Um, I can't pronounce his name, Danny Oliveira, and Kyle Kuzma. And I still give the advantage to the New York, to the New York Knicks when it comes to small forward because we have Evan Foyer, Alan Burke, and Damian Dwayne Bacon. Dwayne Bacon, he's not, he's not going to give you that much points. He's a hell of a defense player, and he's one of the players that can, you know, once a month, maybe twice or every three months, he will give you 35 points. He will give you a spectacular game. He's one of the players. He's not consistent, but his defense is, and I think that's why Coach Tibbs, our super coach, coach of the year, won him on the team. But like I said, I gave the small four advantage to the New York Knicks, all right? Now, when we slide over to the power four, it's going to really be a runaway. I just might as well say it's the New York Knicks, but I'm still going to run off their, um, power, their power fours against our power four, all right? Their starting power four is Raul Hachimura. Their backup is Dave, um, Davis Bertrand, Isaiah Todd, and Anthony Gill. Well, you know, I never really heard of Anthony Gill, to be honest with you. Isaiah Todd, I've seen him play once or twice. And Bertrand, he's really a disappointment for all the money the Wizards gave him. So I don't know, but I still want to give the power for it to the New York Knicks. If y'all think I'm being biased, I'm in the Knicks cage and I'm wearing a Knicks shirt and say, what's a Brooklyn Nets fan? What? Um, write in the comment section, let me know like what y'all think. But I think Julius Randle, Obi Toppin, Kyle Gibson. Now, this is what I'm saying. Anthony Gill and Kevin Knox. They can both fall in that category because some of y'all, a lot of people heard of Kevin Knox because the New York Knicks is a well known, respected team. And even with Kevin Knox having a little bit of potential, I know your average household people, it's not average, but certain people, if you're an average basketball fan, you heard of Kevin Knox. Just like that. But a lot of y'all ain't here no Anthony Gill. And I can guarantee you that. Now, let's move down to the center. All right? Let's get down to the center position. Get down to the center position. Give me a few minutes. All right. Washington Wizards is Daniel Gafford, Montrell Harrell, Thomas Bryant, which is injured with a torn ACL, so they don't even know if he's going to play this year. And for the New York Knicks, it's Mitchell Robinson, Norlene's Noel, and Jericho Sims. And again, I hate to sound like I'm being biased, but I give advantage to the New York Knicks because Daniel Gifford. He only averaged, I don't think he even averaged double digits in points or in rebounds. I know he have a high field goal percentage because he doesn't take that much shot. And when he do take a shot, it's like he's right at the basketball. And basically he's getting he getting plays where most of the time the play break down, the defenders is all over the place, and he probably get a sneaky basket. And he always in the position at the right time, but he doesn't average that much points. That's why I've got to give the um, advantage as for sentence to the New York Knicks. Mitchell Robinson, we all know what he's capable of. If, we, if he can stay with scoring double digits, we know he's going to put a block. So that's why he's, he's a difference. And we see what Norlene did. He's not going to give you double digits, but he's going to give you double digits block and rebound. And Jericho seems, he might be a little bit of enigma right now. But for what I've seen in the summer league and what you've seen in the summer league, this kid have a whole lot of potential. And even if we just put him in there for five minutes or six minutes a game, he would do just enough quiet six or seven points to keep us right where we need to be until we either put Noel's no, no back in the game or Mitchell Robinson. So there, I, I actually do give the New York Knicks a better, New York Knicks is a better team than Washington with it, even with the addition of Dinwiddie. You know what I'm saying? Especially we got Kimber Walker, um, Evan Foyer, this, it just got introduced to the New York Knicks today. Um, I'm going to do a video on that a little later on as well. But I just wanted to talk about Spencer Dinwiddie and him choosing the Washington Wizards over the New York Knicks. I think he made a wrong choice and I think he's going to regret it. But at the same time, I don't know if any of y'all are into these, DC. I like to watch DC. They always have these alternate universes. You think about like, if we didn't got Dinwiddie, would we got the players we got? You know, it just what kind of scenarios would have um, unfolded? But anyway, I just want to say, oh, everybody out there to stay safe, stay healthy, God bless, and peace.